Arrow is returning from its mid-season break on January 21st, which is two weeks exactly after the date of this upload. And with it, it is bringing the second half of Season 7. Now, Season 7 did go pretty well in the first half of the season, but that was mostly because of the Oliver in Prison storyline. The second half will not have that storyline whatsoever, so it is still uncertain if it will be as good as the first half. With that in mind, I wanted to go over five things that I wanted to see in the second half of Arrow Season 7. Number five, Roy Harper returning in the present day. So, as you know, Roy Harper is a series regular on Arrow in Season 7, but he's only appearing in the Flash Forwards, and this is definitely a little disappointing because a couple months ago when it was revealed that Colton Haynes will be returning to the role of Roy Harper in Arrow Season 7 as a series regular, that was very exciting because Roy Harper is a very important member of Team Arrow in the comics, much more important than most members on the show, except for Black Canary. So that was definitely exciting. He's also a great character on the show. So it definitely was disappointed when Arrow Season 7 came out, and he never appeared in present day. He only appeared in the Flash Forwards. Now, the Flash Forwards are definitely very interesting, and seeing him there is pretty cool. But I would much prefer him to just appear in the present day. Now, I do think this will happen, as it was confirmed a couple months before Arrow Season 7 came out, that Roy Harper will deal with the consequences of Oliver revealing his identity, because now the world does not think that Roy Harper is the Arrow from Season 3, and he could just come out of hiding because he wouldn't really be arrested, and he would not be put in jail. So I know he's, like, traveling the world with Thea or something, but it's confirmed in the Flash Forwards that he and Thea had some sort of falling out or something. I mean, he's not with Thea anymore, so although that kind of sucks, I would still like to see him return in the present day and rejoin Team Arrow. Number four, the Ninth Circle becomes the main villains. In the comics, the Ninth Circle are a corrupt criminal organization, and I think they're a bank as well, who are villains to the Green Arrow, and they are also very, very new villains. They debuted three calendar years ago in 2016, although I say that because it is currently the beginning of 2019, so it hasn't been really three years, but it was only in 2016 with the relaunch of the DC Universe, including the Green Arrow, who did get definitely get a huge change to him. It's actually my favorite comic run in Rebirth, and the main villains of that run were the Ninth Circle. Now, the Ninth Circle will 100% appear this season as uh, in Diggle and Lila's side story. They're tracking down a guy named Dante, and on top of that, Amico Queen is going to be a big part of this season, and both those characters are characters in the Ninth Circle, they are both affiliated with the Ninth Circle, with the guy Dante actually being the leader. So they will be appearing in this season, and they were pretty great villains in the comics, so I do think that they should become the main villains of this season. Now, you might be thinking that Diaz is the actual main villain of the season, and he will be, and that you're probably right, considering he is a series regular this season, but I don't think he should be. I mean, he had a pretty good run in the, what, 14 episodes he was the main villain, or the 15 episodes he was the main villain between Arrow Season 6, Episode 15, and Arrow Season 7, Episode 7. I think he was a pretty good villain for those episodes, and that's basically a full season. He doesn't really need any more than that, and I mean, the seventh episode of Season 7 acted as such a great season finale for that kind of season between those episodes, and a great season finale for the villain, Ricardo Diaz, so he should not be the main villain of the rest of Season 7, and the ninth Circle definitely can. Number three, we should be introduced to John Diggle of Earth-90. In Elseworlds, there was a pretty great Green Lantern reference when the Barry Allen, aka The Flash from Earth-90, mentioned that on his universe, John Diggle has a ring. Now, he didn't say John Diggle, he just said John, which means on Earth-90, there is a guy named John who looks exactly like John Diggle, who has a ring and is friends with the Flash. This means, obviously, that he is a Green Lantern, which is crazy, because not only is this the first confirmation of a character who is a Green Lantern in the Arrowverse, although Hal Jordan has been referenced before, he's never been called a Green Lantern. We've never seen anything about the Lantern Corps before, so this is huge, but also because this is a confirmation of a famous fan theory that John Diggle is actually Jon Stewart, aka Green Lantern, because the similarities between these two are insane. They're both black, obviously, they're both named John, and they both have a military background. Also, they both work with superheroes who have green in their names. For Diggle, it's Green Arrow. For Jon Stewart, it's the Green Lantern Corps. So uh, this is a very famous fan theory that is coming to fruition on Earth-90. 
90, where John Diggle's counterpart is most likely John Stewart, aka the Green Lantern, and I definitely think he should appear, or maybe John Diggle on Earth 1 should actually become a Green Lantern now. He wouldn't be John Stewart. Maybe it could be revealed that his father was abusive to him and his name was Stewart, so he took his mother's name. I think that is definitely something they could do here. They could retcon in to the show with John Diggle. That's definitely something they could do, but uh, as of right now, the safest bet would be to introduce the John Stewart from Earth. 90. Now, the reason this is only number 3 is because they can technically do this same thing on The Flash, and this isn't that specific to Arrow, even though it is the same character as a character in Arrow or, or a counterpart of him. They definitely can do the same thing on The Flash, and it's not very specific to Arrow Season 7 and the second part, so I will leave this right at the middle at number 3. Number 2, Felicity Smoke's villain, Origin Story. In Arrow Season 7, a new thing they're doing are the Flash Forwards, and in the Flash Forwards, we have a lot of characters from the present day. Some of them are grown up, some of them look the same, but even though they are way, way older. But one thing that was confirmed was that Felicity Smoke was dead, which was pretty exciting for everybody who doesn't like Felicity Smoke, which I would say is half of the viewers of Arrow, and used to be a lot more, but a lot of them just stopped watching so that was confirmed later it was confirmed that she's only been dead for like two weeks which was kind of a bummer with that because that means that she cannot be killed in the present day because she has to be alive in the future but it was something but then it was also revealed that she's actually a villain in the future the calculator which means that in the next 20 years felicity smoke will 100 percent become a villain because the flash forwards are the future they are not a possible future because they wouldn't do a whole season of flash forwards like they did flashbacks and not have them actually be canon that would be ridiculous so felicity smoke will be dead in 2038 at this point it's going to be 2039 and she will be a villain sometime before that now i do think that they should definitely make her a villain this season as it would just be appropriate because they're doing it in the flash forward she is a villain and she's dead in the flash forwards let's see her villain origin story in season 7. Now, I don't think it's too far-fetched to see Felicity as a villain. I think she would probably be a much better character as a villain. We obviously have gotten a little bit of her villain origin story this season already. She's becoming more ruthless. She almost even killed Ricardo Diaz, and she did actually torture the silencer, so he, she definitely is becoming more ruthless, and this could lead to her becoming a villain, which would improve her immensely obviously if they can't kill her i think this is the best other option because this would limit her screen time at least a little bit this would give her a little bit more things to do and more interesting things to do as a character and this would split up oliver and felicity which is awesome and that last thing leads me into number one Number one actually connects to number two as it's not possible without number two. In number two, obviously, Oliver and Felicity would not be married anymore. They would not be a couple anymore. Felicity would become a villain completely, and I want this to happen pretty early on into season seven, into the second half of season seven, maybe by episode 15, maybe. And for some reason, I definitely see that happening. And then that's eight, see, eight episodes till the end of the season. I think in the end of the season, in the season finale, Oliver and Dinah should get together. Now, this is something that it's insane that they haven't done something like this in the past with Green Arrow and Black Canary as a couple, as they are, in my opinion, the best couple in comic book history. It's crazy to me, and it's so frustrating to me that there is an Arrow TV show, a Green Arrow TV show in live action that doesn't have this couple, and they replaced her with Felicity Smoke. This is something that I want to see at the end of the season. It could be a great cliffhanger for the season, a great ending. Leading into Season 8, if Season 8 is actually a thing, which at this point it most likely will be. So the reason I chose Dinah over Laurel is because Laurel at this point is Earth 2 Laurel, and I don't think that would work nearly as well. And on top of that, I honestly think Oliver and Dinah have more chemistry than Oliver and Laurel, and far more than Oliver and Felicity. So this is something I definitely want to see at the end of this season. So if all five of these things happen, or at least one and two, Arrow Season 7 will definitely 100% be the best season of Arrow yet, which is saying a lot because Arrow Season 5 is, in my opinion, incredible, and Arrow Season 2 and 1 are not far behind from Arrow Season 5, so Arrow Season 7 has to be pretty great to be the best season of Arrow, but if it does one and two, as well as possibly three, four, and five, it definitely will be. So, those are the five things I want to see in the second half of Arrow Season 7. Let me know your list in the comments down below, and if you disagree with me on any of these and you don't want to see 
any of these, which I can imagine some people won't, let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.